Well, first of all, I have uh, two special guests I'd like to introduce today. Uh, I have a friend of mine, a priest. Uh, he uh, from Vietnam. He's uh, studying here uh, in uh, Milwaukee. He's here with us, and also a seminarian, uh, third year of theology. He studied in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and, they, and the older guy came from Milwaukee. No wonder why we've been cold the last few days. He said, what I'm trying to say, and welcome, Father, and welcome, brother. Um, well, sometimes it's good to be a, a person who English is a second language, but you've got to look it up in the dictionary. You know what the difference between a visit and a visitation? Do you? Come on, English-speaking people, you better know that. I look it up, I know. The visit is when you visit your mother-in-law. The visitation is when she visits you. Oh, well, that's an old joke. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, today we hear the story of Mary visit Elizabeth. Mary travel in haste. The word I don't think we use in our regular conversation, the word haste. You know, so I look it up and say, what the hell does that mean, you know? Is it in a hurry, in a rush? Well, that really meant it's in a hurry, but excitedly hurry. Like you couldn't wait for to get here to see me today. That's not a joke. <laughs> what you guys should laugh about my joke anyway. That's what it is. So Mary, the angel came to Mary, and she's in a hurry to come and see Elizabeth. Now, you know she's a 17 years old girl, and she asked the angel, how could that be? I don't know. Man, I'm not, I'm, I haven't been with any guy, but if you tell me the Holy Spirit, I believe it. But it, it's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? But the angels also tell Mary that your cousin Elizabeth, who's now in her 60s, just got pregnant too. You know, back then they don't get telephone. They don't have text messages. They don't have Twitter. They don't have Facebook. They don't got none of those. So Elizabeth has been six months pregnant, but Mary didn't know about that. But you know Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah know, right? Remember Zechariah's story? He was in the altar offering. And then the angel told him that his wife's now pregnant, and he said, like, you must be kidding me. How could it happen? And what happened to Zechariah? He was what? Mute. He couldn't talk until the day John the Baptist was born. So Zechariah and Elizabeth knows they're pregnant. And plus, for God said, Elizabeth is six months. So you can see her woman got in bed, right? But here she got the Mary. The angel appeared to her and tell her that she's pregnant. And then also tell her Elizabeth is six months pregnant. Now Mary, I think she believed, but she just want to make sure. <laughs> you know, so she said, let me come and check out Elizabeth. Because if I'm pregnant now, there's no medical, there is no CVS or Walgreens where you can go and buy it and the test kit to see if you're pregnant, right? So Mary said, you know what? Let me go see Elizabeth and check her out. Do you know how long it is? It's about seven days walking from where Mary to Elizabeth's house, give and take. Now, since Mary's travel in haste, it's been she loved probably as soon as the angel told her. So let's give it another seven days, right? Before she left. And takes it her seven days to come and see Elizabeth. Now come see Elizabeth to do what? To say, man, if Elizabeth is pregnant, probably I am too, because the angel knows what he's talking about. You see what I'm trying to say? So as soon as she came to the house, she said, hey, Elizabeth. Elizabeth said, whoa. How could it happen? Well, Elizabeth didn't say that, but I said that, okay? It was not recorded in the Bible. Whoa, what you talking about? But Elizabeth came out and Mary would look at Elizabeth's womb and say, that's pretty cool. 75 years old pregnant woman. You 
Siti and Seventies. You be careful. You never know. <laughs> you know that's gonna be pretty cool. The whole world will come right here to America. Check on ya. So Mary came and said, "That's pretty cool, sister. How did it happen?" But here's the key point. So how long has been Mary pregnant? Two weeks. How did you know it? Even today. You have to wait for one month, am I right? When you miss that monthly cycle, and then let's go to CVS. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? And you say, Woo, I can't pregnant. Well, why mommy didn't you know that? For some of them to be safe, they wait another month just to make them sure before they announce the whole good news to everybody. Mary's two words pregnant. <laughs> Of course, there's no medical testing back then to know what's going on. But guess what Elizabeth said? Oh my goodness! Good to see you! Look at this! My baby jumping up and down, it hurt me! You know, woman, you know. Just your baby moving in your womb, you know how it hurts, right? This guy just doesn't move, he lifts up. You know how that feel? Ooh, you go, before you lift up, what you have to do, you're gonna push it down and jump it up. Ooh, you can feel that, baby. <laughs> he lift up for joy. This little John the Baptist, six months old. Now, Elizabeth knows she's pregnant, but she doesn't know Mary was pregnant, was it? How does she know that? What she said, how could it happen that the mother of my Lord came to see me? Not just the mother, it's just my cousin, it's the mother of my Lord. So Elizabeth had to know Mary was pregnant, how did it happen? How did she know that? You can tell, not look at a person 15 days pregnant and can tell, don't you? Can you do that? No. Mary can tell by Elizabeth six months, but there's no way Elizabeth can tell that Mary go pregnant unless the spirit, the angels of the Lord, were telling her, telling her that. That's why the Bible from Luke today tells us Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill up. Do you know what that means? It means overflowing, take control of with the Holy Spirit. That's how she knows Mary pregnant. You know what? We Catholic, we talk about pro-life all the time. We talk a lot. And people always say, is that in the Bible? Show me anywhere in the Bible. Well, the Bible doesn't exclusively talk about that, but surely the Bible is today. So, that little God became man, Jesus, 15 days old, where he's a fetus, was he's an embryo, was he just a fertilized ant, or he's now become a person. 15 days. What did Elizabeth say? The mother of my, come on louder, the mother of my, Lord. Did he say the, the mother of the little fetus? The mother of my Lord. So when is the person who's begin? We got a proof right there. Alice, 15 days old. The mother of my Lord. And now talking about Elizabeth knows that even the little John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, six months old, even knows that. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Yeah, you agree with me. That's good. That's amazing. The mother of my Lord. Now at that time, I really believe by that time, Mary completely believed. She believed before, but she was, you know, just like you and I. We want to hear it. We want to check it out. God tell us, trust me, go this way. I lead you there, but yeah, I go, God, but I just want to make sure. So we deal with that God all the time. 
Or sometimes you just do like that. Blah, 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 blah. Is that our children do to us all the time? So they don't have to listen to you. Come on, mom, I can't hear anything. And what do you do? Tell them, be quiet. So you can hear me. Yeah, I'm right, I know that. I still do that to my mom because we refuse to hear the word of God. We don't want to hear it. They don't like it. Just like children, I don't like it, mom. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Close their ears and talk really loud so that the word that mom said or daddy said don't go into my ears. Mary said at the end, no, not Mary, Elizabeth said, Blessed are you because you believe that the word of God is fulfilled in your life. Do we? Do we believe it? Are we willing to allow the word of God to be fulfilled in our life? Or we just say, blah, 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 God, blah, 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 I can't hear you, God. Sometimes God has to say, be quiet! So I, you can hear me. I'm talking! <clears throat> talking to you! Let me tell you, God is good. He doesn't treat you and I the way he treats Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. You don't listen to me, you no longer can talk, boy. That's going to be bad, isn't it? You know what's going to happen to the whole church? Nobody will be talking in here. And you know who's going to be the first one around the world to be mute? All the president and the prime minister of all the country, they can be the first one to be mute because they don't do the will of God. They get to the microphone and they go, and nobody can hear them. <clears throat> this could be bad, isn't it? God loves us more than Zechariah. He doesn't shut us down. He doesn't mute us. He allows us to talk, to proclaim. So what? So the whole world will know that he is the Emmanuel. The God became man. The God is with us. So you and the lady will start to rain outside. And they was worrying that they over decorated. I just say, put everything you got outside. Show to the whole world that this is what we celebrate. And for God's sake, Stop writing Mary a smash. A smash. It's Christmas. It's Christ. Or oh, happy holiday. What the heck is that? <laughs> or oh, the Christmas tree now become the holiday trees. Why do we let them do that to us? We got to stand up. And do the right thing so that God will be known, that we will proclaim to the end of the earth. I wrote in this pastor's corner this way, and I edit. You know, they have a slogan in the last probably 10 years and become more popular keep Christ in Christ Mass. And I tell us we Catholics have a better one. The best way to keep Christ and Christmas is to go to Mass. You take the Mass and the Christ together, you become Christmas. The best way to keep Christ in Christmas is to go to Mass. In this past year, you have heard me hundreds of times stress the importance of family getting together, of family eating together, praying together, and maybe get drunk together. It's all right. We can't. It's all right. As long as you don't do it in the front yard, okay? <laughs> we, talk, we talk about it. But you know, with many projects this year in this church, I couldn't believe it. 
Let the goodness of the people come together and get an order. Death free. Nada. Death free. Deeply grateful for that. That's part of the way how we show the glory to God. Many hands. You look at all the buildings, all these metal trees are cut down. Even the city calls us up and says, Oh, you are violation of the code. There's nothing I can do. I'm not Jesus. I can't put them back. <laughs> so I am deeply grateful for that. People ask me, what happened up here? Well, we're going to get drunk. Okay? We're going to eat together. That's all we're going to do. These are the altar wives. The wives we use every Sunday at Mass. As a gift to all of you and for your greatness of being part of this church, and I always call this is a family of faith, correct? I never call it a fa parish. A community is a family. So every family at the end of this Mass say, please take home, visitor included, and if your family is like Joseph, you got a big one, you can get two, okay? You got a big family, more than four, you can have two. Take one home and use it for your Christmas dinner together as a family. Eat together, drink together, and pray together. Just like the Holy Family, and we shall be fine. It's our gift to you. It's the same wine that we use all the altar. That same wine that you take it home on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, or on New Year's, Take it out as family eat together, drink together, and pray together. You and I, we will be just like the Holy Family. So please come up after Mass and take one for your family. If you got a big one, take two, all right? Yo, you surely can take two, maybe three for you, but uh, you have more children, I would like you to take five, but you know. I love to put on you. And Ben, by the way, where's Ben? I got you right there. That's David Finley, brother, from up to Houston. We I welcome you here. How many you got? I want two. I need one for the rope. You need one for the rope, and you can take another one from David, okay? <laughs> David is not allowed to drink. But anyway, do that. As I said, stress the point. On this Christmas day, Please eat together as a family, pray together as a family, drink together as a family, and we will be just like the Holy Spirit.